Hey all you Minnesota Skinnies, this is Con Man 101 and welcome to another episode of Sports Talk. And this is going to be a mainly MLB oriented um, episode of Sports Talk. Uh, I'm, go I'm going to be mostly talking about the newest um, deals involving um, the MLB. Um, I'm also going to be talking about basketball and hockey because um, football is over now. The the Eagles won the, uh, the Super Bowl, which I don't know, I was not really hoping would happen, but I'm glad the Patriots finally got dethroned. I feel like the Eagles are going to be the new um, dynasty, in my opinion, with Carson Wentz coming back. Um, but what I'm not happy about is um, the Eagles winning because of the fans. You know, the majority of the Eagles fans, as I said in my predictions video, aren't that good. They, they aren't really that good of a fan base. The whole city, um, as far as football, just isn't that great. So I was hoping that both teams would lose, but since that's not possible, I'm kind of glad the Eagles won. But with that um, NFL stuff aside, let's get into the baseball portion, the MLB portion. Um, there have been a lot of notable trades, a lot of notable signings. One of the most notable ones is J.D. Martinez being traded from the Arizona Cardinals to the um, Boston Red Sox. Uh, and that one is a very notable trade, I would say. It, it puts the Red Sox really right up there with the Yankees, in my opinion. The Red Sox were insanely good last year. Not enough to beat the Astros, obviously, because the Astros were way too good for anyone. Um, but the Red Sox, with their power, add, adding J.D. Martinez with his power to that team of powerhouses that already were there, I think is going to make them a real competitor to the Yankees. Not enough to, uh, not enough to beat the Yankees, because I feel like the Yankees are going to win the World Series this year. I don't think there's any question about that. They just kind of stacked their roster. Um, now going to Hugh Darvish um, for the Dodgers. I feel like he isn't that big of a piece compared to J.D. Martinez. He is significant for the Cubs, who were really, um, really rough on pitching and their depth last year. They gave up a lot of points. Everyone gives Hugh Darvish a lot of crap for, for blowing his game in the World Series. But, I mean, he's a good pitcher. Just because he had one choke doesn't mean he's a bad pitcher. So he's a good pitcher, and the Cubs need depth. So I think that was a, a good trade. Eric Hosmer, the Royals to the Padres. I don't really see the Padres being that big of a threat, um, even though they did pick up a couple a couple key guys. Um, I don't see them being that big of a threat. The biggest story here is the Royals having to get up, give up a whole lot of their... Um, their hitting and pretty much a lot of their um, roster um, that really led them last year. So I think they're going to really take a step back from the step back they already took last year. Um, and it kind of leaves the door open for the um, Indians and Twins to battle it out for the, um, the division. Um, I'm actually really excited about the um, the Twins this year. I feel like they're going to uh, take a, a, a sizable step forward. Um, they are definitely adding a lot to their um, their depth as far as pitching, um, especially adding Jake Odorizzi, who pitched for the Rays last year and is going to be, I think, a huge asset to the Twins. He had a, a pretty good year last year. Um, not an insanely good year, but enough that he can become a real asset to us, especially as weak as our pitching has been. You know, making it into the playoffs last year was just really painful. We just barely made it in and it was not because of our pitching, I can tell you that. If we can really get our pitching figured out, I feel like we are going to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, we also added Michael Pineda, who is now on the 60 day disabled list, so that didn't really make a difference. They also signed Anibal Sanchez, who I feel like a lot of people are writing off. He uh, might not even make it on the roster at first. He might go down to minors. Um, and they apparently traded a uh, they apparently traded a pretty uh, notable rookie that could end up doing um, a lot for the organization later. So people were kind of wondering why the Twins did that. And I mean, they need, they need depth. And this is the year, I mean, these are the years where they need to make a run. Joe Maurer is not going to last much longer. And 
they're a young team now, but without that seniority, they're not going to get very get very far. Sorry, but um, yeah, I think that adding Anibal Sanchez was a pretty good move. So now let's move on to um, NHL. There is a lot of surprise here with the Vegas uh, Golden Knights being the one of the best teams in the league, and that doesn't happen with an expansion team. It really doesn't. Um, that is very surprising that that would happen. Um, usually an expansion team doesn't start doing good for multiple years. I feel like the um, NHL kind of dropped the ball on that one because you can't give a player that, I mean, a team that many good players as an expansion team. It, I, it just wasn't very well carried out. We got San Jose in the Pacific and Anaheim. Um, no big surprises there. Um, in the Central, Nashville and Dallas are two of the three, but Winnipeg is a big surprise. They were terrible last year. They were, they were pretty bad. Um, the fact that they were the top of the division is also very surprising. And then going to the wild card, we've got uh, St. Louis and Minnesota. Minnesota being two points ahead or one win ahead of Los Angeles. Um, I am actually pretty disappointed with the Wild this year. Um, they're kind of the team that I'm supposed to go to when the other teams um, aren't good. And now all the other teams are actually better than the Wild. The Minnesota teams are really trending up, I realize. Um, but um, the Wild were really good last year. They added to their roster this year. And then Preezy was hurt for most of the beginning of the season and then just kind of all fell apart. And this is actually... actually falling apart for them in the wild card spot because they're usually so high up um so that is a little disappointing but they're still in a good place to make the playoffs and with with hockey you can never really be um sure in the eastern conference we got washington pittsburgh that's not a surprise but philadelphia is the big surprise philadelphia was terrible last year um tampa bay uh, lightning best team in the league um after being subpar last year um, the Bruins and the Maple Leafs, the Maple Leafs being another surprise. Um, huge surprise that New Jersey is uh, in the wild card spot right now because they were the worst team in the league last year. And Carolina is also a surprise because they were pretty bad last year too. Uh, and that is a much less competitive wild card race than the one in the Western Conference. So let's just go over the NBA. I mean, you got. You guys know how much from how much I've emphasized it that I just think the NBA is a joke by now. Just all the insanely good players making four, basically four all-star teams um, out of the, the four teams that are really good and then the rest of the teams are just left in the dust. Um, and uh, we all know that the Warriors are going to win the, the finals anyway. So just for the heck of it, let's just go over the NBA anyway. So Toronto, um, one of the only surprises, is leading the um, the Atlantic um, with a 41 and 16 record. This is a, you can tell how lopsided this is. The worst team is 19 and 40, and there isn't much in between. The Boston Celtics are just two games behind that, um, and then Cleveland is obviously obviously winning the uh, the Central. They're, all that stuff people keep talking about, about them not having it and and falling behind, they know, I, I'm here to share my opinion that they know exactly what they're doing. They I, I really think they do. Um, I don't think they have anything to worry about. They're just creating drama by taking a few steps back because they know that they can beat any team in any stadium. They don't need home field advantage, so they don't need to to waste all their energy trying to win regular season games. They really don't. And all this, so all this stuff about um, LeBron just giving up on his team and everyone saying they're not going to win, it, it's it's really bogus. It's just going to be Cleveland and, and uh, Golden State again. So um, going to the Southeast, we've got the Washington Wizards at 33 and 24, probably one of the least competitive divisions in the uh, the whole NBA, um, and then actually the Timberwolves are leading in the Northwestern Conference. I mean the the Northwestern Division, um, two games over Oklahoma City. Um, I I should be getting excited over the fact that the Timberwolves could make the playoffs for the first time in like ten years, 
Um, but, I mean, I'll watch them, but I know that they're going to lose to either Golden State or or one of these other teams of uh, Houston, either Houston or Golden State, um, the two teams that um, we're, we're probably going to lose to. So I'll, I'll watch it, but that's probably what's going to happen. But yeah, Golden State just crushing the next team, the LA Clippers, 13 games ahead. And then Houston is 10 games ahead of San Antonio. So really no surprise there. It's just going to end up with the same result. So I don't really follow the NBA as closely as all the other teams. But that pretty much does it for Sports Talk. Um, please let me know if you have anything, any questions, any concepts, pretty much anything about um, those sports uh, that you would want to uh, want me to talk about. Um, I am willing to answer any questions you may have. Sorry about that light. Um, but I, I really appreciate all the support you can give me. Um, so anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Sports Talk. I really love doing this. Um, please like and subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side.